guys welcome back to my channel my name is jessica and i'm your host on this channel just signatures uh i want to say a very big thank you to all those who keep coming back to my channel and to all the new subscribers and the new people who are just seeing me on this channel i welcome you all and i say you're welcome to this fabulous channel and you're ready to get um educated and informed on this channel okay guys in this video today we'll be making this beautiful corset top and this corset i said it's corset in five minutes because the method i'm going to show you in making this corset trust me you would fall in love with, with corset making because it's the, it's the easiest form of corset that you'd ever make if you check my videos on this channel you see that i have videos about corsets and corset making and stuff like that but all of them take a little bit of com complicated routes but you see this particular one that i said is making your corset in five minutes trust me it's making your corset in five minutes like the drafting like in five minutes you're done with drafting and cutting and then you go ahead and sew it up so if you're interested in watching how i made those fabulous um dress then let's go to the work table but before we go there a pretty quick um disclaimer i lost a clip in this video and that clip is how i made the sleeve it's a balloon sleeve a really really exaggerated balloon sleeve but one thing is if you want to see how i made the sleeve encourage me put your comment in the comment section and then i'll let you know i'll do a video on how to make that kind of sleeve so if you've not subscribed to my channel please subscribe to my channel turn up your post notification so that whenever i post any new video you'll be one of the first people to get notified and watch my videos then also if you like this video give it a thumbs up share with your friends tell a friend to tell a friend to come and subscribe like and also watch my videos so let's get to the workstation and enough of the rambling the first thing to do just like for any um work that you want to start on any dress you want to make the first thing to do is to get your basic bodies measurement so now i'm working with um the upper part of my basic bodies measurement now the second prerequisite for this corset is your ready-made bust cup your ready-made bust cup now you can use you can decide to make your own cups with wording and stuff or whatever method you use in making your own cups or you use the ready-made cup that i'm using here now for you to be able to um work within this timeline that i said uh, corsets in five minutes you need to use your ready-made boss cup because it will save you excess time it will save you so much time from making your own cups and all now the next thing to do is to measure your nipple to nipple measurement divide by two and add your seam allowance half inch seam allowance now um that's what we call our bust point, uh, bust pan measurement. So after marking your bust pan measurement and you rule all across the line, you get your ready-made bust cup, like I said earlier. Now, this cup, I, I'm, I'm folding it into two because I want to get um, the midpoint of it, the midpoint of this cup. So after getting the midpoint, I place it, I place that midpoint on my boss pan measurements. That midpoint should be aligning with your boss pan measurement. You can decide to tilt the cup a bit if you don't want the cup to be straight. Whichever way you do it is fine. After doing that, you just rule across um, the cup. You see, across the cup, or you just rule the outline of the yeah, the outline of the cups. Like you draw, you trace out the cup on your paper and then the distance between each cup to the other one because your bust is two not one you you separate it with whichever measurement you want which i'm doing here i did one inch you can decide to do as much as one and a half inches or two inches depends on what you want or what your client wants so guys after doing this the next thing is to um rule it um towards the arm o point you rule it towards the arm o Points. now whichever way um your 
whichever place your arm o is it really doesn't matter as long as you get a smooth curve indicating that that is your new arm o measurement some people's arm o is already on that their bust line so with that they'll just rule into the arm o but if it's not you're still fine you just do uh what your pattern allows you to do then you cut out and guys we are done with the front part like yeah we are done i know you're surprised you see this is all of this for the front part is less than two minutes already then now we want to do the back part all you need to do for the back part is replicate the front part with zip allowance and you're done you can see that i said this corset is in five minutes it was not a clickbait for you to just click on my channel and see what i'm doing no i actually meant it it's corset in five minutes like the drafting of it i'm not talking about adding other uh, adding bottom or yoke or drafting the corset itself and cutting it out you do it under five minutes if you know what you're doing so what i'm doing here is measuring my um zip allowance you can do whichever amount of zip allowance you want you can do as much as um three four five six seven eight don't do that please you can do as much as two inches zip allowance which is more than enough but i did um one inch here and then the next thing to do is to align the front and the back together and cut it out you can decide to cut it out directly or you decide to trace it out first before cutting it whichever way you decide to do they are both fine as long as you get the same measurement for the front and the back let them be accurate so that when you sew it all meets where they where they are supposed to meet so after i ruled that line i wanted to outline it but i was like oh whatever so i decided to just you know cut it out immediately now i just decide to mark where i want my um neckline to be at the back and the arm o point also now the part that needs to match is the arm o point because they need to be able to match uh when you're joining your fabric but you see for the neckline you don't have to make it the same thing as the front you can make it higher you can make it lower depends on what you want you can make it curved you can make it straight depends on the design you're working with you can see initially i marked it higher but then i decided to take it um a, a little bit lower you know for just to make it more to give me more back opening you understand but if you don't want that you can decide to just leave it up the way it was before so um guys basically this is it for the front and back bodies of this corset now you can see that i wasn't joking when i said it's corset in five minutes yeah guys we're done like we're done with our drafting all you need to do now is to place it on your fabric and cut it out and your corset is your corset pattern is ready can you see that i kept my word now try doing this on your own try doing this by yourself and see how easy and um quick it is then you'd know that i'm the real deal like i really brought the real deal for you and if you already know this method kudos to you these are things that you need to know as fashion designers how to make your work easy these are just little little acts you need to know although it it will not work for every other one but trust me it works and you see the final result now the next thing i did is to cut out the bust part in preparation for um cutting the fabric and sewing it now i just cut out the bust part when you cut out this bust part you can decide to still keep using the cups that's the ready-made cups or you decide to make it to use it to make um your own cups if you know how to make your cups then that's good you understand what i'm trying to say here but if you don't hit me up in the comment section and i'll hook you up so guys what i'm doing here is i'm taking half an inch on both sides for both the top and the bottom part because i want to give it that shape of course our bust is not flat it has a little bit of shape a little bit of curve so i want to portray that curve now for this particular uh, one because i'll be using this material uh, this um pattern to cut out the fabric that will be covering the um ready-made bust that i would be using 
so guys you can see that it's already looking like um a bust or a ready-made cup so this step is really really necessary i would not tell you to skip it so don't skip it now guys after doing this after ruling um uh, both the upper part and the lower part the next thing to do is to cut it out before cutting it out make sure to label yeah i forgot to tell you that make sure to label it because if you don't label it because they are small um they are small pieces you could mix them up or cut um the same part for the other side or where it's not supposed to be there you cut it for each other so just to avoid all of those unnecessary mistakes um label them appropriately now you can see that i'm just checking to see if they match up if they don't match up you have the freedom to make them match like i've showed you this in other videos so that's not one of the big deals you can see how beautiful our pattern came out and so the next thing to do is to cut them on your fabric now i added um half an inch allowance around where the bust is going to sit where that curve that open curve is i added half an inch allowance because i'll be i'll be sewing the um, ready-made cups to that part so you need that allowance and um the next thing i did now is to cut out the cups now the course i also added that allowance the allowance is also reflecting on the cup part you can see i added half an inch allowance all around the cup and i cut two pieces each because we have two busts these two pieces i'm still going to cut another two pieces for them for the lining part but if you're not using the fabric to line you cut out two pieces of your lining fabric i don't know if you get what i just said you know everything you cut out now on your main bodies you're going to replicate it on your lining piece so that's just the grammar i spoke earlier so you can see we already have the front and the back and also the cups now because this is a tutorial this is me explaining and all it took longer than it's supposed to be but when you're cutting directly it's not supposed to take this long now for the skirt part i have a video showing you how to make um a basic skirt pattern which is this this is a basic skirt pattern so check out i'll link the video in those um description so check out that video and see how i made it if you don't know already if you do let's go let's get on with it i said earlier in my introduction video in my introduction video yeah that i lost the clip on how i made this exaggerated balloon sleeve so if you're interested like i said leave that in the comment section and i'll try and make a separate video of how to make an exaggerated sleeve because guys i would love for you to see the method that i use but let me try and walk you through it now for i had a balloon sleeve already so now to make it um, well exaggerated i just um divided it into um the smaller pieces and then i aligned them together on a new pattern paper after aligning them together on a new pattern paper making sure that they match and uh, it goes with the old silhouette of the initial sleeve pattern i um I just cut all around it i don't know if you get what i just said but like i said earlier if you want a really detailed tutorial on how i made this sleeve let me know in the comment section and i'll make sure that i drop something for you so guys make sure you put your tape where it's necessary because things can move and you don't want because like the length said, you don't of want the things to move previous then you sleeve cut wherever is you want um, to cut. longer now because so, the so length of I my just sleeve added um, is, um, another piece of paper underneath it's no biggie like just to make sure i account for the length that is missing but if you don't want it this long you can just fold up the other one or cut it off so that's just all the drama that i'm doing over here so you can see how like this sleeve was really huge 
that I was even doubting if I was going to use it. But yeah, I ended up using it and I loved it. So guys, if you want to see how I made this sleeve, I cannot stop saying that. Hit me up and I'll hook you up. So if you've not subscribed to my channel, I don't know what you're waiting for. Please do subscribe to my channel. I really appreciate that. Uh, give this video a thumbs up if you like it. Don't forget to turn up your notification bell so that whenever I post any new video, you'll be one of the first people to go watch them. So that you can see I'm done with this sleeve. And see, it's almost taking the whole of my table space. Like, you can see how wide it is because I want the volume on the sleeve head and also the bottom. That's why it's this big. Now, this is me cutting it um, on my fabric. I just laid it, folded my fabric into two because I wanted to cut the two at the same time. I don't want to go through this the second time so i just laid it on my fabric and yeah cut it off like you would normally cut any other um fabric and pattern piece you're working with and that's all for the sleeve let's go into the sewing of this um dress now the first thing i did was to fuse this fabric with interfacing cutting interfacing i used um they call it cutting sd so i used it to fuse it together and then i joined um one of the a to the to one of the b and i um sewed in between the a and b i don't know if you understand you know we label the pattern we cut a and b so that's just what we did we cut out it uh, we cut out the pattern and then sewed half an inch that we left before in between the um, two pattern pieces so now you can see we have our cup ready. Now, you can now decide here to go and um, press open the seam on the inside so that it will be flat. It will not be poking out. You don't want it to poke out. So you can do that. And then after doing that, at this point, if you want, um, if you want to make your own cups at this point, here you you are free to do that but since i'm not making my own um cups i'm just checking to see that my measurements are correct and everything is in place and then after doing this i'll take my ready-made cup and cover it up with um the fabric that we just made for now we're not working on the lining pieces we're just working on the cups so i realized that my cup i needed extra allowance on the on the top part so i had to you know cut out a new one for it now the mistake was that i was supposed to add um like one inch allowance on the top part when i was cutting but i added only half an inch which i corrected and you can see it's looking right now so after doing that after covering the cups the next thing to do is to sew it to the bodies of the corset. Like this corset here is the easiest corset. And mind you, I did not use boning, but if you want to use boning, of course, definitely you can use boning for this. You can definitely use boning for this. You do it the way you do your normal bone. You either create casing for it, or if you watch my video on how I made my transparent corset on this channel, which I'll have linked to this video, if you watch it, you see how I cased my original boning and I just applied it on it. You can do that as well. So after doing all of that, you attach your cups and you can see our corset is ready. At this point, if you're not lining it, you just pipe the top part and the bottom part and my gosh, you're done. But because I'll be lining it, I did the same thing I did for the main bodies to the lining piece. The only difference is the lining piece, I did not um, use a cup because we don't need another cup inside of it. I just used the fabric alone with my interfacing. Why I did I used interfacing for this lining part is because the fabric itself is not a stable fabric. It's um, a crepe fabric, so it moves a lot, and I don't want all of that movement. But if you're using like a cotton fabric, then you don't have to use interfacing for the lining. And also, if you're using a crepe fabric and you can handle the movements that it will make, then you can as well do it like that without um, lining for the 
uh, without interfacing for the lining. So guys, what I just did is the allowance that I used to sew the cups, I want to lay them down so that they will be laying flat. Doing this would make the cups stand on their own. And also, if you are not using cups at all, like you don't want cups at all, if you do this that I just did, and you put um, an under wire, a bra under wire, then your cup, it will be standing like, your boobs will be standing like you have a cup inside it. But this is not for making your boobs stand or whatever. It's just so it will lay flat and nice inside because it's the lining piece. You don't want anything poking out or not looking nice, especially when you're making this for a client. And even yourself because you need to wear good things for people to see and admire and then come to you. So guys, you can see the lining piece is ready. It's like the replica of what we did for the uh, main bodies. So the next thing I'll, I'll do here is to join the back piece together the back um piece of those particular stuff now because i want to line it all together i don't want any seam allowance inside i'm joining the back piece of the uh, main bodies together with the back piece of the main bodies uh, together with the front piece of the main bodies sorry for that let me go again i'm joining the back piece of the main bodies with the front piece of the main bodies to form the full bodies, your complete block. Now, after forming this complete bodies, this the, the same method I used here is what I used for my jacket tutorial. I have that jacket tutorial on my channel. You can go check it out if you want more detail on how to do this. But let me still take you um, along with it. I did the same thing now for the lining piece and I'm just placing them right side together. Now you place them right side facing each other and then you sew all around the top part first so that you can top stitch the top part and then you sew around the side and the bottom if you want after flipping before you sew the bottom part so that you'll be able to flip to the right side. Obviously, we're not wearing the back part of this dress so now try to avoid your um red made cup try to avoid it so that you will not have there's this uncomfortable ill looking way it will come out if you catch it with your cup so because you want it to sit properly on your body or on your client's body avoid sewing on the cups itself so all you need to do at this point is to sew with a continuous straight stitch. Like I said, you avoid the curves and uh, you sew gradually. I always used to say this, no one is chasing you. So you sew gradually and make sure your sewing is um, nice and neat and everything is working together for good. <laughs> so guys, after doing that, you top stitch, like I said, why you're top stitching is so that everything would lay flat. Like you just want everything to lay flat. Whatever you're sewing, just make sure that they are laying flat and then you'll be good to go. Now, after top stitching, I went ahead to trim down whatever excess that is inside there because we want to avoid any bulk, any spirit of bulkiness. We want to cast it and bind it. So that's just what we did here i missed a spot so i just went back you can go back and sew nobody is saying it's a taboo or anything you can go back and sew no matter how expert you think you are just wherever you miss a spot go back and sew it so now after top stitching and trimming off excesses this is what we have now we sew the edges together so we'll be able to turn and have uh, a clean finish. So you can see, yes, guys, yes, yes, yes. Our uh, corset, like if you just want it as a corset, then the only thing you need to do is to put your zipper or your eyelet or your lace closure, whatever you want to use to close it at the back. 
then it's ready. But because we'll be adding a skirt to this, then it's not. I went ahead to give it a good press. And you can see it's laying flat and nice and it's looking juicy and lo looking like something that it's ready to wear because it's actually ready to wear. So now, after doing all of this, we'll go, we'll move um, to the skirt part. Now, the skirt part, I will not be going deep into um, the tutorial of how to make a skirt or how to join a skirt because I have a video of how I made a basic skirt. This is just a basic skirt pattern, a basic skirt block. So if you want to know how to make this, if you don't already, for my beginners that are here, don't worry, I got you covered. Just go down to my description box. I'll have it linked. So you check out that video and you know how we did this. But if you're not a beginner, probably you're uh, in the intermediate level or advanced class or you're a professional, whatever it may be, let's continue from where we stopped. So here I'm just sewing with um, my seam allowance, the seam allowance I left on my pattern. You, you know, we didn't line the skirt part because this fabric doesn't actually need lining. The reason why we lined the upper part is because we don't want all of those roughness showing. And also I wanted to cover the curves. I wanted to cover the interfacing and all of that to make it look good because just leaving it that way would not look nice at all. Here, I'm just taking in my dot for both the back and the front. All of this is well detailed in my basic bodies tutorial. So if you want to know how to do this, how to take your dot and all of that, go watch that video. So guys, um, like I was saying before, the upper bodies did not need and uh, it needed lining but this lower body did not need lining because one the fabric is not transparent and it's really it's it's a fine textured fabric it, it, it was even the texture that drew me to the fabric not the the patterns on it but the texture so we didn't need to line the bottom part of the skirt but if your fabric says line me then line it so that you will not have any wardrobe malfunction like having uh, your panties line showing or stuff like that but this fabric just did not need all of those so now my skirt pattern is ready for me to join it with my main bodies you can see that even the complete dress of this uh the complete dress is really easy to make fine it's not in five minutes but the complete dress is really like at the snap of your fingers you'll be done with it so now i just decided to pin it down i pinned it um appropriately making sure everywhere matches each seam allowance matches each seam allowance seam allowance for the front matches the front and the back and the upper bodies and the lower bodies and then after doing this part i went ahead to serge with my overlocker now over to the sleeve now, what I'm doing here is joining the arm o part. Is it the arm o part? The sleeve length. I'm just joining the sleeve together to make it a continuous straight stitch. And I'm joining with half an inch allowance because I wanted that volume. You joining with like two inches allowance is taken away from that volume. But if that's what you want, then fine, you can do that. Then after joining the sleeve together, I'm closing up the hem part, the hem of the sleeve. That's the bottom of the sleeve. But leaving about one inch opening. I left about one inch opening. You can leave as much as two inches, but don't do more than that because it's just not needed. So the same thing I did for the first sleeve, I'm doing for the second sleeve. I'm, in case you missed it, watch again. I'm closing the sleeve m out I, I just folded it by half an inch allowance depends on how much allowance you left on your pattern if you left up to one inch or two inches then fine take it like that and then leave the leave your one inch opening and then now what i'm doing is i just measured my um elastic band 
because I want to gather it off. Of course, for you to get that balloon sleeve, is that you use an elastic to ruch it together or you use a gathering stitch. But in this video, we'll be doing um, elastic. So here, I just want to show you how to do that. You put your elastic, uh, your safety pin across your, or in between your elastic, just make sure it's holding your elastic. Then the other end of the safe, of the elastic, you use your office pin to pin it down to the fabric so it doesn't move. And then the next thing to do is to pass your safety pin across the um, sleeve, the sleeve hem. So you come out from that opening that you made. Now you see the essence of that opening. If you see that your elastic is too big and it's not, uh, it's not tight enough, you can cut it off. Just make sure you get rid of the excess elastic band. Now you can see, I now I'm closing the, I closed the two in, the one inch allowance that I left there before. I closed it up. And then trim out every loose thread. You can see our sleeve is ready. Now to attach the sleeve to the main bodies, you can do it in two ways. You can decide to make a um, an elastic casing the way I I did here, or you just um, fold it the way it is now, and then you use your elastic to pull it together to rush it together okay let's not go into that one so it will not get confusing just do it this way i think uh, along the line i'll be making another video of how to make this sleeve in a different way too so now after um doing that you you pin to your main bodies you pin it to your main bodies and let it stop where you want how far you want it to go in the front part is left to you. How far you want it to go at the back part is left to you. Three to four inches is okay, but you might not need up to that depending on how wide or how narrow the person is. The person you're doing this for, how the person is. So here I'm just pinning it down. So I'm working on the second sleeve. I'm closing it up as well. And then it's ready to um, take in my elastic. Now, this is the method I want you to do for now. The other part, I don't know how to explain it to you. The other method, I don't know how to explain it to you, but I promise I'll make something like that on my channel. It might not be now, but I will. So... I just passed in my elastic through the casing. The way you would normally pass elastic through a casing on any sleeve, you pass it along there. And then what I'm doing here is tacking it down because you don't want to see that elastic and you don't want it to unravel because it will be across your shoulders. It will be across your shoulder. Now, if you don't want this step, if you don't want this elastic across your shoulder and all, when you're making your sleeve, do not expand the um, the shoulder parts. Do not expand the shoulder part. Don't do that at all. So you can see I'm rushing the sleeve to my measurement. And then I'll just cut off the excess elastic and then um, pin tack it down like I did for the other side of the sleeve. Don't worry, guys. We are almost done with this like we are we are semi done with this dress so now after cutting out all of your loose threads your sleeve is ready to be attached to the main bodies now you pin it arm o to arm o and then you sew upwards to whatever allowance uh, to whatever measurement you want to sew to like i said before it's up to you it depends on how close you want it to be with your chest or how far you want it to be so it's just that arm o part you're sewing you know, and 
that ammo part towards where you want it to stop that's where you are so in the remaining part just leave it hanging when you put on the dress you raise it up or you can leave it as an off shoulder so there are two ways you can rock the dress you can leave it as an off shoulder or you raise it up the way the style is already so guys we are done thank you for watching you can see the finished look is looking mwah. So thank you guys for coming back to my channel. I love you all. Don't forget to subscribe.